Speaker, I think there has also been a system problem because some of them have received the enhanced salary, but others have not. Because you know the the the, the, the others were not not captured by the Ministry of Finance, but they have also been updated now, and everybody will get their salary enhanced. Thank you. Now, colleagues, you see, when I open up this issue now, all we shall do is to blame. We blame this one, we blame this one, we blame. So, right on your Prime Minister, kind of take up this matter. Because you can see, whenever you're on this floor, and you see one minister inviting the other, <laughs> you know there is a problem somewhere. And now it goes back to you. I would... Uh, Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. What I wish to add is that whatever is not going well can be resolved administratively. It's no longer a budget issue. It can be resolved administratively among the MDAs which are implementing this reform. Thank you. Now, colleagues, look. And I tend to agree with the minister on this. Salary is a statutory obligation. Okay? So the moment we appropriate for it here, that is given. So if there are any issues, they should be administrative. And that's why now I've referred the matter to the Prime Minister. Right on, your Prime Minister. Uh, kind. Please, the speaker is speaking. You must hear me in silence. Yeah. So, right honourable Prime Minister, kind of take up this matter, and uh, on Thursday during Prime Minister's time, update the House uh, how you've sorted it out. So, colleagues, I want to put the question. I want to put the question that the House adopts the report of the Committee on Public Service and Local Government on the petition on salary enhancement discrepancies for nurses and interns. Those in favor say aye and to the contrary no. no. The ayes have it. Uh, colleagues, I have... Uh, uh, yes, I have a lot of matters of national importance. You know, today I said I want to sort your issues, then I go to the next items. So I'll do quickly, we fall into Prime Minister's time and then we see how to move forward. I'll start with Honorable Kwizera, Wagahungu. Right Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. Colleagues, we have uh, Chisoro Airport, which had been supporting uh, the internal flights. Uh, it is uh, of 3,000 meters, but tarmac is 1.2 uh, miles. Right Honorable Speaker, the airfield is in a solid state. Now it is a danger to our airport because the flights cannot go in and out because the tarmac on the runaway is now worn out and there are more flying stones and potholes on that airfield. My prayers are that government should urgently take up the matter to rehabilitate that airport, Chisoro Airport promote internal, to internal tourism and regional integration. And secondly, they should expand it to 3,000 meters. I thank you. Honorable Minister for Works. Honorable Chair was here. Right, Honorable Prime Minister. Um, the colleague wants you to talk about the upgrade of Xoro uh, airfield which is in a very poor state and it's attracting very many uh, tourists it has portals I've landed on that airfield <laughs> when you're on the runway <laughs> that's the time you know that 30 seconds is a very long time <laughs> 30 seconds is a very long time and you know that area attracts very many tourists because of uh, the mountain gorillas and all that. So the member needs your intervention. When is this going to be done? 
because they had promised that it was going to be done. Yes. Thank you so much, that honorable speaker. During the time when we went to Kisoro to, com to campaign for the same member of parliament, I landed, yes, on the same airport. And I saw the state in which it is. I also know the state in which it is. Today, the Ministry of Works is doing a review and I saw Kisoro Airport and these other airports, Kasses and the Lake on the program and uh, I think it's work in progress. So for the record, airfields. Yes, airfields, okay. Uh, wow. This is the matter we should follow up. I remember I encourage you to keep following up on this matter. We shall always give you space in case you are not satisfied. Honorable Abed Wanika, doctor. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, Masaka City, Masaka District and the surrounding districts were serviced by two very important roads for farmers. Chiavakuza, Chiwangala and Agwe. And also Chiavakuza, Matete. These two roads are in very, very bad state. We have approached Yunula in Masaka to ask them for assistance. They have said they don't have equipments. All equipments in our area, they are down and they are supposed to be serviced in Imbalala. Right Honorable Speaker, my prayers that uh, the government should swing into action and help us renovate, rehabilitate these roads. They are very, very key for our farmers to reach the market. I so submit. Right Honorable Prime Minister. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, I have taken note of the members concerned. We had a meeting with the UNRWA and the Minister of Works and Finance when the engineer in charge of maintenance of this equipment was complaining of lack of money. In this financial year, money has been given the works department in charge of maintaining our equipment and I believe all the equipments will be maintained across the country including those of Masaka and therefore I believe and we have given them money to maintain roads that money was put in the uh, in the newspapers of 17th of October I request members to also help us monitor across board so that this money is put to good use including districts all districts across the country have been paid and given money worth 50% of the annual budget 